Professor. Good morning, students. Today we will discuss about the topic called as chemical effects of electric current. So, in your previous classes, you have read about the effects of the electric current and how does it behaves and what are the remaining effects of the electric current. And you also read about the definitions of the electric current and what are the conductors that are used for the flow of the electric current. So in this chapter, we are going to listen about the some effects of the electric current under the influence of a chemical. So we all know that what is electric current? The flow of charged particles. The flow of charged particles. The flow of charged particles through a substance is called as electric current. And we already know that uh, there are number of charged particles uh, that makes the uh, uh, to move in a uh, substance. And uh, those may be electrons and those may be positively charged particles. And uh, the electrons, uh, most of the conductors for the electricity are solids or the metals. Metals are the general the so in solid nature okay do you all know that these metals are good conductors of electricity for example for our electricity electricity purpose in our homes or in our offices at everywhere we use the copper wires or in generators we use the copper wires aluminum wires which are generally metals these metals are nothing but the solid forms of those are solid substances and it makes the electricity to flow from one point to the another point. Now my, our question is does the liquids also conduct electricity? If electricity is conducted in the liquids how do they so? Okay that is all we learnt in this lesson. So chemical effects of electric current generally a chemical or we can call this as a, an electrolyte. Electrolyte. So we will see that in our uh, regular life uh, when we touch the any switch or when you keep the your hand wet hand with wet hand if you uh, keep the hand in your plaque point you will feel shock. Why do they so? Okay, what makes the what makes the uh, this electricity to move? What, how you will get the shock? So this is all due to the that the wet hand contains the water, isn't it? So the wet hand contains the water. So if the water is present outside the body, so what makes the current to flow inside? Okay, so those are lot of uh, pigments named blood and a lot of. Uh, solutions that are present inside your uh, body so this is all uh, these are all nothing but uh, the chemicals or simply a liquids so uh, not only the metals or the solids the liquids also conduct uh, electricity and in this uh, like in solids there are good conductors and there are uh, bad conductors of uh, this uh, electricity and to prove that whether the electricity is passing or not we have a device called as a tester and this tester contains a bulb which is used to determine whether the electricity is flowing through it or not and when you keep the tester inside a plug and you can see that if the, uh, if the bulb of the tester glows it indicates that the electricity will be flowing through it. If the bulb does not glow, then you can say that the electricity does not flow through that circuit. So let us see how the electricity will be flown through our liquids. Generally, to conduct electricity, we need a substance and those substances are nothing but conductors. Conductors means these are the substances which allow the light, which allow the 
current to pass through it the substances which allows the current to pass through them to pass through them are called as conductors through them are called as conductors and in order to conduct we need a chemical which allows the current to pass through them and those are called as also called as electrolyte so an electrolyte is a chemical or it is a liquid that conducts the electricity that conducts the electricity through it it is called as electrolyte a liquid which conducts the electricity through it it is called as a electrolyte and these electrolyte are nothing but the liquids there are different types of liquids that are present in our everyday life so let us take with the tap water the general form of water tap water next distilled water distilled water next salt solution let us take a lemon juice and different other substances liquids that are present around us now let us say whether these are good conductors of this uh, electricity or not so to in order to prove this uh, whether these uh, substances conduct an, an electricity or not uh, let us do an activity so first uh, you should take the test uh, and uh, check its working whether it uh, works or not uh, so in order to do uh, testing the uh, the current is flowing or not uh, you have you need a tester which is fitted with a a bulb at its end at its end if the tester or if the bulb of the tester is working then you can say that the electricity is passing through that circuit and normally in you, you in olden days they used the different kinds of bulbs but now we use a bulb called as led because there are some devices which cannot produce more amount of current in that condition in that condition we need a we need a tester which is a, we need a output which is having the very minute amount of current if it is passed uh, if a minute amount of current is passed through it okay it should glow so for that uh, the best output unit is led and the full form of led is light emitting diode light emitting diode diode means the other name of diode is also called as electrodes what are these electrodes these are the conducting materials which allows the current to pass through, which makes the current to flow okay these are called as electrodes or diode diode means two two electrodes are called as a diode and led is having the two diodes that means two electrodes will be present two points will be present two points or two pins will be present two pins will be present you will have the the two pins are also called as the terminals of led the terminals of led and out of which one is longer one longer pin and another one is a shorter one the longer pin acts as a positive terminal and the shorter pin acts as a negative terminal
the positive terminal and the negative terminal so when you test with this test uh, in the place of uh, so with the help of the led even the small amount of currents uh, can be drawn through this led and makes the tester to glow so now our question is why do we need the led instead of this we can use the many bulbs which are used in earlier is so now why do we using the led now uh, what is the use of the led with this activities with the help uh, in the chemicals so let's come into that point so in solids as we already discussed in the earlier classes those are very good conductors of electricity so they can conduct the electricity in a very large scale now this lesson is about the chemical nature that means uh, with the help of the liquids can do their conduct the electricity so the liquids can can also conduct the electricity but not on the large scale so the current uh, that is coming from the liquids is of the short range and those short range cannot be detected by the testers which are having the bulbs that are used earlier so the using of led is uh, even the small amount of current is passing through that it can take that current uh, and it, it can be glown so that is the using of the uh, uses of led in the testers